On uh, regarding the Megillah, there are many people that they want to have their own reading of the Megillah in their homes for whatever reason it is. So, obviously, the Alakha says that Megillah a person should try, if it's possible, to do it in the shul. Berov Am Hadrat Melech. More people there is, more kavod for Akadosh Baruch Hu. Therefore, the Alakha says. That in a case that you have, you know, small minyanim, they should cancel the small minyanim and actually to join one big minyan. Only in a case that it's impossible in the big minyan because it's too big, too many people, you cannot hear, etc. In this case, you will be allowed to do uh, other small minyanim as well. But let's say a person is right now in a situation that for whatever reason it is, he has to read a Megillah in his house. So we all know that Megillah reading obviously doesn't apply. Thank you so much. Doesn't apply if you don't have a kosher Megillah. That's number one. And number two, number two, even if you read to yourself, you have to listen to yourself. You have to be able to hear yourself. Okay? If you just read it uh, quickly without mashmi'a le'ozno, if you're not hearing it, lo yatsayi de'chovah. Even with the avad, you didn't fulfill the mitzvah. Okay, so therefore, if you're reading, you must have a kosher megillah. And number two, you must listen to yourself. Okay, so now, the halakha says regarding microphone, microphone could be a problem. Why could be a problem? If you're not able to hear without the microphone, it's not good. It's not good. So the chazan who is reading must raise up his voice, especially if he's in a big place, he must raise up, uh, raise up his voice to be able to hear him without the microphone. Usually a person, when he has a microphone, immediately he loses the, his voice. Right? So the the, the Baal Kodeh has to be careful with this halakha. Uh, another halakha that is also important, if you're reading to yourself, or you're reading to somebody, yeah, privately the halakha says that you don't recite the last berachot. Just recite the first one. The last berachot you recite only if you have minyan. Only if you have minyan. Therefore, there are certain places that they read the Megillah for ladies, like we do over here. Okay, if you don't have a minyan for the reading of the Megillah, so you recite, huh? No, no, minyan, minyan. So if you don't have a minyan, you don't recite the last berachot. Uh, of the Megillah. Now, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people, they complain whenever they you read the Megillah, there is a lot of noise for Haman, for the name, right? For the names of the son of Haman, etc. A person has to know that the Alakha requires to listen the whole of the time Megillah from the beginning till the end and not to miss one tiny word. That's Alakha. What happened if you actually missed the word? There was so much of a noise. You're not sure if you heard it properly or not. The Alakha says, it's good to have a regular Megillah, even a book, with you. And then if you miss one or two words, you read it from inside, okay? And you catch up the Hazan. It's not enough of just reading the words that you miss and then, okay, now I'm listening. No, you got to catch up the Hazan. So once you catch up the Hazan, you continue the reading, uh, you continue the listening of the Megillah. How much you can read by yourself inside a humash and still will be kosher? As far as you're reading, as far as you're hearing, I'm sorry, the majority of the Megillah from the Baal Koreh, right? It's enough. Even 51%. 51% you heard it from the Baal Koreh. I remember one year, there was a situation in the middle of the Megillah, somebody had a call, you know, give you a call, emergency call. He didn't talk at all. He didn't spoke at all. He took the phone. He went outside. Mm -mm -mm. They told him this and that and that and that. Okay, everything was solved. Baruch Hashem. He didn't spoke in between. He heard the majority of the Megillah was already towards the end. But now he had no chance to catch up the Baal Kodeh. What is he going to do? 
is going to take the Chumash and continue reading from inside the Chumash. Because at the end of the day, he heard the majority of the Megillah from the Balkan. Those are details that some, sometimes are important. Why I'm saying that it's important? Because if not, you miss the mitzvah. You have to know, we have the obligation of reading the Megillah during the night time, during the daytime. If you miss during the night time, there is no catching up what you missed yesterday. You understand? And that same al applies for men, same al applies for ladies. So ladies should know those al as well to fulfill the mitzvah uh, properly. I want to share with you a very nice, <coughs> very nice idea that I saw, I saw it yesterday. It says like this. We all know the part of the story, how the story started actually, was by Achashverosh telling Vashti, right, sending messengers to Vashti that he wanted her to come only with a crown. That's it, no garments, only crown. Chazal is saying, Chazal is saying that she she wanted to, she agreed. She refused to come with a crown. Either nothing or everything. Crown, not at all. Being without clothing and a crown is this dispersing the 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 the, the kavod of the melucha of the kingdom. She's not ready to do so. The midrash also says that she wanted to, but then she had the two Two different midrashim, two different saot. What happened to her? Some are saying that she had tzara'at in her forehead. And some are saying that she got a certain type of tail. What is this midrash? We have to understand. What is this midrash? Okay? But Rabotai, my main concern is that the Torah doesn't bring any story in the whole entire Tanakh without a lesson. The Torah is not coming to tell me history. There is tons of history that the Torah doesn't even mention it. Because there is no lesson to take out from it. Why it was so important for us to know what were, what, what were the details in between Ahasuerus and Vashti? Tell me bottom line. Ahasuerus got upset at Vashti and he killed her. What do I care? Only the crown. Uh, without the clothing. So she... What's the point of here? There are many explanations. Many, many explanations. Chazal is saying that Borei Olam punished Vashti Mida Keneged Mida. She was making to suffer her Jewish servants. She had servants that were Jewish. And Vashti was making them to work without clothing, etc. I was very embarrassed. But I saw a very, very nice perush that I think this perush is important to all of us. You see, Chazal is saying that that crown represents the Torah. Man Malcher Rabbanan, Chazal is saying, who are called Malachim, kings? Rabbanan. Rabbanan are Talmud Hachamim. The Torah, the crown represents Torah. That's why when Amisai got the Torah, every Malach, every angel put on top of Am Israel two crowns. One. Can I get Naaseh? The other one can I get Nishma? Which means the concept of crown applied by Torah. The concept of garments by Chazal, we compare it to the Midot, to the qualities. Why? How do we know this? Say Chazal that. We, if, uh, first of all, when Adam and Hava made the scene, Hakadosh Baruch Hu made to them kotnot or veyal bishem. Why Hakadosh Baruch Hu had to make them a special garment? What's the purpose of the uh, special garment? Just you know, tell them, okay, guys, go and uh, do garments for yourself. Hakadosh Baruch Hu kiviachol says to Adam and Hava, okay, you guys screwed it in your midot. You heard Lashonara, you accepted Lashonara from the Nahash, right? So from now on, on okay, you have to fix those Midot. Fixing the Midot represents the garments. Garments are fixing the Midot. That's why usually Midot in Hebrew, what's the meaning of Midot? 
Huh? So midah is a measurement. Okay? Garments have midot, have measurements. Not only that, the nahash, the Torah says, haya arum, mikol chayat asadeh. Arum, the, the shot of arum, okay, it was that it was sneaky, it was, it was a troublemaker. But arum also in Hebrew means naked. Because it's midot, he had no midot. That was an ahash. So garments, they represent midot, and the crown represents Torah. Ahashverosh says to Vashti, I want you to come without garments, but with a crown. Chachmei Adrash, they explain that this is coming to teach us that some people, they think that, yeah, I can come to Shu and I can have learning of Torah, and I can know a lot of halachot, but that doesn't obligate me anything. My dear friends, if a person has no midot to vote, if a person, when he comes out there, out from the bed midrash, he acts in a way that he doesn't, doesn't match with the Torah that he has, is not only is not only showing that he doesn't have midot, he's also showing that he doesn't have a crown, that he doesn't have Torah. Kivyachol what Vashti said to Achashverosh, I refuse to go with the crown. It means if you want me not to have midot, I cannot have the crown either. You understand? That's why, that's why Rabbi Yisrael Misalant, he used to, he used to, uh, he started the movement of Musar. The movement of Musar saying that unfortunately, in his time, since his time, a lot of people that they were learning Torah daily for hours. The way of acting was not matching the type of learning. So he went and he made a huge campaign of learning Musar. You know, they say that one time, I don't, I don't remember the details, so don't catch me at the word, but one time there was a great rabbi by the name of Isra Zalman from Meltzer. And this rabbi brought, uh, no, Mechila, okay, whatever. There was one of the rabbis, either him or Rabbi Hanan. This rabbi was sure that this student is going to be the next Gadol Ador of the generation. So he wanted, he wanted to show the student to the actual Gadol Ador and to get his approval. They got there. And uh, they were sitting at the table. They were sitting at the table. There was the Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Hanan Vasarman. And there was the Gadol Ador. I'm not sure if it was a Hazanish or somebody else. I'm a Hira. I don't, I don't remember. And there was a student. And the two rabbis are spoken between them. And the Rabbanit brought some cookies and uh, cakes and uh, something to drink, some tea. They were eating and drinking. And then the student, he was a little bit bored. Well, not bored, but he was like, he was there. So there was those crumbs of the cake that he ate. He started to, with the finger, to touch the crumbs and to eat them. Okay. After they spoke a little bit, the Gadol Ador says to the Rosh Hashiva, do me a favor, tell your student to wait outside, I want to talk to you privately. They spoke, and then he asked him, why are you bringing me this boy? He says, Rabbi, this boy, you don't understand. What a potential, what a Tamid Hakam. This boy, I'm pretty sure that it's going to become the next Gadol Ador of the generation. Just wanted to show you and to get an approval. So the, the Gadol Ador, I think it was the Hazonish, tells him, not only is he not going to become Gadol Ador, he's not going to even have Torah. So Rabbi, <laughs> why are you being so tough? I mean, uh, the, you know, he's the Tamid Hakam and he's learning. He says, I'll tell you why. I saw this boy, you know, taking those crumbs 
and it's not derech eretz. You don't act this way when you're in front of Talmidei Hakamim. When a person doesn't have midot tovot in derech eretz, he cannot have Torah. Because the recheretz kadma la Torah. Therefore, the remez that the Megillah is giving to us is to know that each one of us, like it or not, we are a certain type of role model out there. Because you come to shul, because you have a set time of learning Torah, people are looking at you, like it or not. People are looking at you. If the way how you act out there in your business, the way how you act out there in the street, the way how you act when you drive, doesn't match with what you represent, so you have absolutely nothing. And that was the meaning of Vashti, Kivyachol, Kivyachol, by saying, I might accept not to come with the garments, but I then cannot come with the crown. Crown represents Torah, garment represents Midot Tovot. A person must have both of them. You know, I just finished with you with this with uh, this idea. There was a certain boy, a certain Avrech from here. I told you this story in the past. A certain Avrech from here that he had to go to pick up something in one of the stores. He usually doesn't uh, does not go to any any store around the area, happened to be that he needed to, so he decided to go to one of the stores to pick up an item and to go back to his car. Next day, one of the mitzvahim over here comes up to me and he tells me, Rabbi, what a type of avrechim you guys have. Unbelievable. So what happened? Say, I was in the mall, I went to a mall, then I see one, one of the Avrechim walking super fast without his glasses, stick to the wall, and running, boom, he enters to the store, grabs his uh, stuff, obviously with the Recheret, and he leaves. And I was amazed. I was amazed because I realized how careful he is for these type of things, like his eyes, that I ask myself, what about me? Rabutai, we give example all the time. All the time. The way how you act, the midot and everything, you are giving a right impact on other people. There are certain people that they decided to keep Shabbat just because they spend the Shabbat in a certain family, not a rabbi's family, and not nothing. A certain family, they saw the harmony, they saw the simcha, they saw the divrei Torah, the singings of, of the Shulchan. Rabotai, we can all do this. We are the ones who are giving the right example. If we give the right example, we have the recherets, we will have Ezad Hashem Torah as well. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen Amen. Rabbi Hanani Amen Echashiyah Amen Ritzach Adosh Baruch Hu Ritzach Adosh Baruch Hu Ritzach Adosh Baruch Hu Ritzach Adosh Baruch Hu Ritzach Adosh Ba